Hi, my name is Eric Paitko, and I'm the music director and conductor of the Saskatoon Symphony. In classical music, there are generally two types of music. We have programmatic music and pure music. The lines, of course, between the two are quite blurred often, but program music depicts a story or some intentional plot, whereas pure music is just that. It's music that has no intentional story or background. For example, we have Beethoven's Egmont Overture, which talks about a Dutch nobleman from the 16th century who is under siege by the Spanish invaders, and he is captured and is about to be executed. Beethoven depicts that where it's gloomy at first and there's a lot of angst and foreboding, and then he whips up into a nice victorious frenzy, and the day is, of course, saved. And then we go to Dvorak's Ninth Symphony, entitled From the New World. Ironically, it does have a title, but it actually is pure music. Dvorak spent three years of his life in the mid-1890s in the States. He ran a conservatory in New York City, but he also visited the Midwest in Iowa. And a lot of the themes and music from the symphony are influenced by his time in America. He was very much influenced by the African-American spirituals that he encountered through students at the conservatory. There's a very famous tune that most everyone knows, even though they might not know it's from Dvorak 9, but it goes like this. Dom, bom, 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 bom. It's the main march of the fourth movement, and it's very exciting, it's very triumphant, and it comes out of us, this uh, glorious introduction that many people mistake for the Jaws music, but it's actually Dvorak wrote it first. But I'm gonna concentrate actually on the theme from the second movement, it's a beautiful Largo. And it goes a bit like this. And it continues on. And the reason why I sung the second bar is because this theme did the reverse of what the Egmont or Beethoven did with that music. A few years later, one of his students actually turned it into a spiritual and added words. And that was picked up by the African-American community, who Dvorak respected very much, and actually a few of his students were African-American. This is in the late 1890s, which was unusual in major conservatories. And so it turned into something called going home. But it also references his longing and his nostalgia for his homeland, Bohemia, Czech Republic. And, and Dvorak's themes, a lot of them have this nostalgic quality to them. As you can see from these two examples that the line between programmatic music and pure music is often blurred. The listener, of course, is an active participant in music making, and the intentions of the composer are often blurred as time goes on. Maybe from there you can go into the dum bum 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 bum. Sorry, let's try that again. <laughs> and you get the mixture of the two, perfectly prime examples. But also, you'll hear composers. Oh, now I'm going to get into another big tangent about Stravinsky, which is not good. Let's just wrap it up that way. 